Welcome back to this modding Doom 3 editor series part 10. In this episode we'll examine how to build movable platforms using the classic Quake 3 multiplayer funk platforms. As well, we'll build a callable lift that we can control on the map using a GUI. Take a moment to click the subscribe button if you're enjoying this series, or leave a comment below the video, a like dislike is always nice, or click the alert button so you're notified when new content in the series is posted. Otherwise visit the channel Tom's World for a complete list of all our videos. If you've ever wondered how the Doom 3 game was built, stick with us as we delve into the Doom 3 editor. So shoutouts to start with, RPGsta. Well, he sent us this link and it's pretty cool here. So if we jump on the internet real quick and you can just search the dark mod or dark mod and there it is there. I'll put the links to, down below in the comments there. But if we go there, this here thing, uh, it's a beautiful website. Uh, it's basically a free game, a stealth game built on the uh, it for tech technology, the Doom 3 uh, engine. So if you want to jump on here, they've got some forums and things and it looks really great. And this trailer looks absolutely fantastic. I'm not going to show it too much, but if you watch it, it's actually quite good. Okay, come on, broken glass. See, that smoke is fabulous. Anyways, watch that. We're not going to watch it right now. So let's jump out of there. And then uh, let's see here. David Yorick, uh, he, he sent us a link. It Tech 4 Discord group. So I'll, again, I'll put the link below. But here it is here. Just sign in. And I'm assuming that these are, you can chat with people that are modding and building in, uh, you know, the Doom 3 editor and Quake 4 editor. Basically in that Doom 3 editor. So if you want to hook up with people, there it is there too. Victor Vorti wrote us a nice email. He's an aspiring content creator and mapper so uh, welcome aboard Vic and we've got Rub Cuber and he is a Quake 4 mapper yeah he's one of those I know but goes to show you that that Doom 3 editor uh, lends itself to Quake 4 so welcome aboard everyone thanks for joining me subscribe if you haven't but anyway there it is let's jump back into the editor here real quick Oh, sorry, Dad. I called you David Yorick. It's actually Dead Yorick at Tech Discord Group. Okay, so we're back in the editor. A little builder tip here. If we minimize this window and we double-click our render window, we can see it full size. So we're just in our map that we built the sentry in. We just made some adjustments. Uh, we moved the trigger that uh, makes the sentry come alive up and out of the way because we don't want to trigger him. Uh, what else did we do? We moved our little ladder assembly here with our GUI, the ladder, the speaker, the little trigger that called the script. We just moved it over to make some room I threw in a crate and we moved our railing out of the map and they'll be fine there we can always grab them later and move them back if we need to but they're just gonna get in the way and we got monsters on the map but they're not gonna bother us we're not gonna see them so okay so we looked at how to get a player up on a elevation and we did that with a static ladder and we did that with our little secret ladder our moving ladder there uh, there's other ways we could do it we showed a ramp uh, you could do stairs which we're not gonna look at you could do a full-blown elevator which we're not gonna look at let's resize this back down again uh, what else are we going to do? Let's see here. I've got a surprise way of getting the guy up there, but I'm going to show you that guys later. Uh, show you guys that uh, later because it's kind of weird and funny. Uh, what we are going to look at is two entities, a funk plat, and we're going to look at a, well, we're going to create a lift that we can call. And we're actually going to make that out of an elevator entity, but we'll see that in a moment. So funk plat. So let's just, uh, you could draw out a brush. Uh, you know, a simple brush, whatever you want, texture it like of the floor, a little platform the guy to stand on. I built some brushes here. I pre-built them. And it's nothing fancy. It's just a platform with some edges on it. So it looks kind of nice. And then I textured it nicely. And I think they're made up of nine or ten parts. I got a couple of different sizes and I've just cloned them. So there we see them in the render window. See, now that we know how to do the full render window, we can mess around with that. But anyways... All right, so here we are down here at XYZ window, and you can see, I don't know, it's made about six or seven brushes just cut, to, you know, to, to size. So let's grab all those. And we know how to do that with that sort of that selection tool. Let's make sure everything's inside. It is. We're going to go up to selection and select inside so we just grabbed all those little brushes and what we're going to do is right click on our xyz window and we're going to look for something called funk plat so this is all alphabetical funk not splat plat there it is there and you can see turn to an entity see where my mouse is hovering that's the origin and you can see how just by creating entities we can group a bunch of brushes together and uh, patch meshes together and create this little entity and it's got little sort of characteristics now what i like to do is always shift I'll, whenever i create an entity shift o because i want to make sure that origin is centered so very important so we're going to take that little funk plat and we're going to move it into our map 
Okay, we're gonna put it where? We're gonna put it up here. Uh, for now, whoops, there we are. Let's move our camera angle to the other room there. I think we gotta come up a little bit, right? Yes. Okay, and where's our platform? Where is he? Oh, he's down there. Okay, we gotta come up here. So let's grab those two brushes, hide everything else. What I'm doing is I'm positioning it where it's in its top. Okay, there it is there, the origin's not, yeah, the origin's centered, okay. Now, we have to position it in the map in its top position. I don't know why it built it that way, but that's the way it's built. So you're gonna have to put it in, in its top position, and we'll see what I mean in a second. So let's select that entity, and if we go down to our entity window, we can see funk plat there, and we're gonna put in some key vowels. The first one we're gonna put in is damage tab we're going to put in 20 it's not super useful uh because what this is defining is if somebody stands under the platform if it goes down on them it's going to give them 20 damage not super helpful for single player maps but pretty good yeah, useful and if a monster goes underneath there you'll get crushed a little bit but okay we're gonna just throw it in there anyway all right so let's make sure it takes uh, i could expand this a little bit where are you there you are. Okay, so we can see. And also, don't forget, once we create an entity, there are all these uh, key values we can put in here, and that's for your reference, right? But I, I kind of know some of them. So first one we're going to put in is damage 20 on that on that uh, funk plat. Next one we're going to put in, let's see here, is speed. This is the magic one. Uh, my height's 120, because remember I drew sort of texture-friendly brushes and I drew 120 high. I just happen to know what that elevation is, so just keep that in mind. And what I found is a good speed is 150. You can play with the speed. If you go too fast, it kind of flings the guy. So there's a hint at the surprise coming up at the end. So we're gonna put that in there, speed 150, and that just defines how fast this thing's gonna go up. Okay, the next one we wanna do is height. Now we have to determine how high this thing's gonna go. Now again, I happen to know that that texture or that brush is 120 we can see it in the map if we hide everything let's have a look at its height and there it, oh sorry it's 128 okay 128 i'm gonna write that down so i don't forget that for height 128 okay so let's unhide everything so what we want to put in here then is height tab and we want to put in 128 and hit enter so the travel is going to be 128 up and down okay and what else do we have to put in here so right now it doesn't make any noise so we're going to assign a sound shader for it's up and down uh so the key is snd underscore open and that's don't ask me why they say open it should say up but it says open now i cannot select that sound for some reason down here through this sound tab so i'm gonna have to type it in but you can copy this so it's sound forward slash i have to kind of crane my neck here to get around my microphone to get to the keyboard so stick with me here so it's sound forward slash ed forward slash elevator ele elevator forward slash right yeah forward slash elev don't ask me why this is like this underscore right elevator forward slash elev full whoops full f-u-l-l -L. there we go full underscore elevator underscore full underscore two s dot web it's a pain i get it guys but Unfortunately, I cannot select it the new fandangled way. Was that right? Wav. Okay, we only have to type it in once. That's the good news. Okay, so that should be good. Well, if it doesn't have any sound, we know we typed it in wrong. Okay, so let's hit that. Let's make sure it takes a sound open. No, we haven't got the right, the right characters in here. ED forward slash. Okay. There we go. That's how it's supposed to look. Let's hit enter again. Yeah, let's make sure the correct one is in there. Sound open. Okay, now we all have to do is just let's just change the key on this pair. Key. Oops, not key. We want SND underscore close. There we go. And hit enter because we're going to use the same name. So let's hit enter. If we just look down here, we can see that sound open, sound close are the same name. That's just going to give us a sound going up and down. Okay, so a lot of key valves, but that's it. So we should be able to hit save. We got the height, yeah. Okay, so we should be able to hit save at this point in BSP. And let's have a take a look at this entity. So we want to go to map six. 
map. Sorry, M6. All right, and if everything goes well, this funk plot should be working for us. And it is. It's too low. It's sinking into the floor. So let's just fix that first thing. So our height is incorrect. Hey, sorry guys, you have to tweak it. That's just part of the game. So it is how thick? It is eight thick, I believe. Yeah, eight thick. So we're gonna knock eight off there, off this height. So let's go 120. There we are. Let's hit save. Let's BSP. Yeah, let's go into it. I hope it finished uh, compiling there. Okay, we'll see. Should be at the right height now. No, it's still not. Okay, didn't compile. I did that too fast. Okay, let's try that again. Height, we want 120. Didn't take, that's all. Okay, so height. 120. Okay, there we are. I shouldn't be doing detail work while burning up video here, but let's get it right off the hop. Because the height is important. There's another way we can get the height too. I'll show you just in a second, but let's jump in the map. Now it should be the right height above the floor. Okay, there you go. There, nice. Okay, so this is how the mechanic works. When we step on it, it goes up. When we step off it, and it goes down. The only drawback is it goes down. Now, if the, our elevation is really high, like, how do we call that, right? Now, it's okay here, you know, it, if it's just a one time through, you know, if the player's running here and he gets here, you know, he goes up here and he can keep going and never comes back to the area, that works great, okay? Now, if you need to egress out of here, it's fine. As long as your elevation is about, well, mine's 120, 128, he doesn't take any damage. But if your elevation is higher than that, then you can just give him a crate like I put there, and then, you know, the careful player will, will take no damage. I think you know what I'm getting at. So it works okay, but the big drawback is the fact that you cannot call it. So again, if you have a tall elevation, how are you going to get down unless you could jump without taking damage, right? All right, so that's the Funk Plat, and you can kind of see it's it's really found in more multiplayer games, not so much in single-player games. It's the classic, what they call the Quake 3, I think it is, Funk Plat. But it's nice that that entity has all that uh, sort of movement built into it. There's no scripting or anything involved, no triggers or anything. It's just right there, and it works great. And again, you can play with the speed and everything else. Now, let's solve this issue that we can't call. Let's see our elevation here was very, very high and we couldn't jump down without dying or taking tons of damage. So what we could do there is we could actually build a callable a lift. And let's have a look at that right now. So what we want to basically build here is a, a lift or an elevator that we can control its up-down movement through a GUI. So we're back in the map here, and you can just draw out a brush with a texture on it, but I'm going to head over to my little uh, fancy dandy here, little brushes. I'm just going to jump over there, and I'm going to grab one of these real quick. Now, where are they? Okay, there they are. Okay, so we're going to grab this guy here. But actually, before we do that, I'm just going to lose a couple of these polygons here because I want it to be flush against two surfaces and I've got a 45 here so let me just grab this and this and let's just delete those okay there we go it's just so we have uh, 90 degree angles on two edges here you see what I'm getting at in a moment let's grab that whole thing uh, let's make sure it's all inside it is selection select Select inside just because we don't want to have to click all these little brushes It's a good practice to get into especially if you have entities here with many many brushes many many patch meshes quick way to select them Okay, so we've got that selected We're gonna right click on our XYZ window and we're gonna turn this thing into actually a funk mover now This is not going to give us our elevator or um, platform movement or our lift movement, it's actually just gonna kind of ride along. It's just gonna give us a surface for the player to stand on All right, so we want a funk mover here all right, and I'm just going to sh uh, shift shift O just to center that origin here. So we've got our funk mover, and we want to just get it in a position here. We want our elevator to have its first position. So I'm going to slide it on over here. Let's get it up. Okay, and let's get our camera over here. Okay, there it is. I'm just gonna grab some surfaces here and just get this thing aligned nicely here. So let's hide everything else. 
Let's grab that funk mover, make sure it's on the floor, and make sure it's buttered up against those walls. Okay, so there it is, so the funk mover. There is one key valve we have to put in here, but I'm not going to do it right now. Um, I'm going to build something else first, and then we'll add the final key valve here. Okay, so that's our funk mover. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to go along for a ride, but it's going to give us a surface for the player to stand on. Okay, so up to so top view. And I'm going to right click and we're looking for a actual entity called Funk Elevator. Funk Elevator. And it's uh, alphabetical order. So there it is, Funk Elevator. And let's just hit Shift O to center its origin. There it is. And first thing we're going to do is now this Funk Elevator entity has got some of the movement and characteristics built in. And once we add this in, this is going to give our up down motion. We're going to be able to attach a GUI to it and do other nifty things with it. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down here to our entity window when we have this Funk Elevator selected and we're going to assign it a model. So, let's just click in the key uh, space here in the key um, area. Let's go up to model. And what we're looking for here is models, map objects, com, and we want to find plat GUI stand, plat GUI stand folder, and within there we should have a plat GUI stand. Okay, and there we have there. Okay, so let's grab that. Let's hit OK. Now, the model's assigned to it, but it's just not showing it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to save the map. And we're just going to reload the map and it'll allow, it'll refresh it and it'll show us our model. So let's go into M6. There it is. And if we look over, it's got its model assigned. Okay, so now we can orientate it properly. You can look in the XYZ window here. Okay, there we've got the model. Let's get that oriented the proper way. 270, there we are. And let's get it centered on that little um, funk mover we did there. Okay, let's get a position. Let's uh, we can leave the paths in. Okay, so where are we here? We want to come back here uh, Right, let's go to a smaller grid size get it down here nicely Let's make sure it's centered Okay, there's platforms a little small, but it, it'll work for us. Okay, so we've got that there We've got our model. The next thing we want to do here is let's let's throw in well we're gonna throw in a key value of move time three. And this is gonna tell us tell this elevator that to go from floor one to floor two, it's gonna take three seconds. You can experiment with this time, but I find three for the uh, elevation of 128 that I have or 120 that I have works great. So we're gonna put in here move underscore time tab and we'll put a three in here and enter okay and that took there okay that's good and then what we want to do is we want to assign this a GUI so let's clear out this key valve fields go up to the key one and let's go GUIs and what we're looking for here is GUIs doors so GUIs doors this is alphabetical doors and lift to move wide Okay, so where are we here? Lift, move, wide. There we go. And let's hit OK. So there's our GUI. And what else do we have to put in here? So I got a, three more we got to put in here. So we're going to put a key val of floor. And this is telling our elevator which floor to start on. And we want to tell it to start on, on floor one. And we're going to define position one and two in a second. But let's put floor one. Let's just make sure that's correct. Okay, floor one and hit enter. Okay, and there it is there. So floor one. Now, what we have to establish is we got to tell this elevator where position one and position two is. And position one is going to be in its down position. That's the way I want to construct this map. Uh, when the player runs up to it, He's not going to be able to get up here. He's going to find the elevator sitting down here. So this is what we want. So we want to establish floor position one. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually grab that elevator and we're just going to look here at origin. We're going to click origin just to uh, load in the key of origin and the val of this number 880 minus 3218. Then we're going to deselect it. And what we're going to do is we're going to select that again, the elevator, and we're just going to change that key. And we're going to put in here floor pose for position capital P make sure you get that right underscore one okay and basically what we've told that elevator um, little entity is your floor position one is going to be at this Z which is that 18 which is the origin of this particular model at the moment okay 
Now what we want to do is establish the second floor position. So I'm just going to grab that little funk static and that elevator. I'm just going to grab that brush there. Let's hide everything. So let's grab the funk static as a funk mover and the elevator and let's move it up to its second floor position. Now there's different ways you can establish this. This is just one way that I'm going to use right now. So let's bring it up so it's even with the floor, flush with the floor there. Let's make sure yeah, it's nice and flush with the floor. Now we're going to deselect and we're going to hit that elevator again and let's look for the origin and we can click that and bring it down here. Okay. Now what we want to do while that's selected is we're going to go into that key and then we're going to type in here floor pose for position underscore two, correct? We're going to hit enter. So we're telling this funk elevator that your second position is when this, uh, your second position is up here and we've established that through that Z. Now you can see all you have to do is get that Z right, okay? And you can figure out different ways of doing that. That's just the way I do it and it seems to be pretty handy. So let's just bring this back down to its first position. Uh, where are we here? Go here. Just be careful just to move it on the Z here. Okay, so there we have it. All right, there it is. Let's bring everything back. Now, we've got everything we need for our elevator. The one last one we have to do is let's go back to that funk mover and we have to bind it to the elevator. We want it to ride along with that actual elevator. So we're going to go in here and we're just going to hit bind for a key and then we're going to hit uh, tab now just one thing I have to check that I name this elevator and I don't think I did no yes I did no name funk elevator okay I'm gonna just change that name just to make it a little bit easier I don't want to type out that whole thing there uh, let's go lift okay let's just rename it lift okay now we can tell this thing the funk mover and we can bind it to that lift so let's just hit a key value of bind lift and hit enter. Okay, so this is the funk mover that's bound to the elevator. Let's just click it and you can just look at the key valves that have to be in there. All right, and then if we hit the elevator, let's just expand this a little bit. These are the key valves that have to be in the elevator. Okay, for my map anyways, but this will give you a good guide. So let's just return all this windows back. And we should be able to compile at this uh, moment and get some action out of this thing. So let's see what we got. BSP. Let's go F2. Let's go into the map. Map M6. Okay, and that elevator should be down there. And there it is. Let's run over there. Okay, so here it is. And we can see that uh, this GUI is telling us we've only got one choice. We can raise the lift. And if you press it, it goes up. And we get the sound and everything that's built in and we could step off it and there we have a nice elevator to go up and then if we want to control it and go down see the GUI is all sorted out you can only go down okay down there we go nice okay now let's say well I'm starting my map obviously like this okay and let's say for whatever reason you know the player finds himself up here and he needs this elevator and it's you know let's say the elevation is really far and this elevator is way down there and there's no way to get down there we want to be able to call this all right so let's have a look at how we're going to do that so let's get out of the map now to call it let's just go into our top view all right so what we're going to start off with here so we're going to start off with a funk static. So in our XYZ window here, we're just going to right mouse click and we're just going to go to funk static. Okay, and it's alphabetical. Funk static. Uh, where are we? There we go. Funk static. And let's give it a model first. So let's go into our entity window and we're going to clear out these key valve fields. Okay, let's click into the key field. Let's go to model. Let's close all this. Just so I can show you guys in what file folder it's in. Okay, so there it is there. So we want models, map objects, it's alphabetical order. Map objects, where are we? Okay, what's going on? Map objects, GUI objects. It's hard to fly through because there's so many of these files, but okay, so GUI objects. We want to go to tech panel one. 
which is this folder here, and we want to hit this tech panel one. It's actually tech DR panel one. Okay, there it is there. Let's hit OK. It's not going to sign the model for some reason, so we'll just hit save. Let's reload the map. There we go. Okay, and there's the model there. All right, and let's get it oriented the right way. Okay, there it is there. Let's get it up against the wall. Kind of at head level. It's too low. Okay, right about there. Okay, so there's our funk static. And this is what we're going to use to call this elevator. And we'll see how this works once we jump into the map. Okay, so that is our first um, model, our first key valve. Next key valve, we want to give this little funk static. Let's clear out our key valve field. So we want to give this a GUI next. Okay, so let's click down here to GUI. Let me close all the folders just so you guys can see where I'm getting this from. Okay, so if you just open that, you'd come up with base GUI. So we open up GUIs. We're looking for doors there. We're looking for lift call. Lift call, where are we here? Okay, there's the GUI. Let's hit that. Okay, so that's got the GUI. Uh, now the one last thing we can do, well, you know what, we'll, we could manually put the target in here, but we'll do our little control uh, K trick. What we want to do before we put in any more key valves on this guy, so we want to clone him because we want to put a GUI up top as well. Okay, because obviously anywhere the player goes, whether he's on the second floor or the first floor, we want to be able to call the lift if the lift isn't already there. So let's put that up at head level, oh, give or take. Okay, so we've got that. All right, so let's go back to that first one on our first floor. Let's get that selected, that uh, funk static. And now we're going to put a key val into this guy. And i got to get this right because it's a little tricky. Let's clear out the key val fields. Okay, so for lower one, what we want to put in for a key here is GUI underscore Harm. and we're just setting parameters on this GUI and we want it we want to set it up this way because then it all kind of works together and we'll see what we're getting at so GUI parm one tab and we want to put a number one in here and let's hit enter okay there it is there so that lower funk static GUI to call the thing it's gonna have a GUI parm of GUI underscore parm one one okay and then let's go to this top one, select it, and we want to do the same GUI parm. The first, the, the key should be GUI underscore parm one. And then we want to put in the key, we want to put a number two. Okay, there it is there. Last thing we have to do is we have to connect the funk static GUI call uh, panel to the funk elevator. So Two ways we can do it, we can either do it this way, we can select uh, the panel first, select the elevator, a little control K key, there it is there. Or what we can do, if we want to do it differently, is if we hit the little GUI on the top floor, we can go down into it, we can hit target, and lift is what we call that elevator. If we hit enter, you see it draws in our path. And that's it, guys. Okay, let's go ahead and save all this in BSP, and let's see how it all works together. Okay, so let's go into our map. Okay, so there it is. So, well, again, we've got our controllable lift. So when it's down here, you see it says it's raised lift, go up. It says moving to upper level. That all works out nice. Once it gets thin, you only get a ch choice to lower the lift, and then it comes down there and moving to lower lift. Now, if we press that, that's obviously not going to do anything because it's already down there. But if we go up here... And say we mosey on across the map and we see this, but you know, it's a really high elevation. Maybe this elevator is even in another room and there's a door there, whatever. We can call it. It comes up to us. And then we can get on it here. And then of course lower it. And raise it. Okay, and vice versa. For whatever reason the player finds himself in this position, he's got to bring it down. You can hit the call and it comes down. 
Okay, and there it is. So we can see, like, basically just, what, four entities all together, and we bind two of them together. We've got a working lift here that we can control with the GUI in the map. No scripts, no triggers, no anything. It's all built in nice, and all our calls work out as well. So there's that. All right, so there's our little uh, callable lift. Now... One last thing, we're going to have a little bit of fun here. We're going to go get a little bit of goofy here. Let's get out of here real quick and go back into the map. So, if you remember, go back, if we're going back to our funk plat here, and we select it and we go into the entity window here, we've got this speed. And this really made me wonder, well, how fast can that actually go? And if it goes fast enough, can I actually create like a human catapult? So I'm just going to jump into a different map here and, and let me show you how you can kind of get a bit creative with this funk plat and create kind of a weird thing here. So let me jump into that right now. All right, so I am now in a little map that I created. It's kind of hard to show because uh, in the render window because it's occluding, you can't see all the walls. But first thing you'll notice that there is a texture in here that uh, is not in the game. And I just brought in my little dev texture. <clears throat> we'll look at how to bring custom textures into Doom 3 in a later video. But I just created a little uh, folder here for myself. We look in the media file in textures, right? And down here, I created a little subfolder called dev test textures and inside there I've got this little square texture <clears throat> I'll tell you why I did that in a minute but basically like if you do any level design when you're blocking out your levels you never start with finished textures right ever so developers always start off with some sort of dev texture and that's what I did for myself here now on this map it's uh, if we just look in the XYZ window what I what I drew basically was a square map I think uh, its floor size is 768 by 768 if we go to the top-down view we can see it's very very tall and you know, look down here, and the, here's the info player start, and you can see he's tiny compared to this uh, really tall room. It's kind of hard to see, but when we get into the map, you'll see what I'm getting at here. I put a target tip in, a couple lights, and then we got our funk plot over here. Let's see if we can't select that guy. Okay, there he is. Now, if you remember, funk plats are always positioned uh, on the top, on its finishing position, that is its top uh, floor position, if you will, or it's the height of its travel. And you can see that it only goes up maybe halfway, not even halfway that total room. And the goal of this thing is going to be to get up to this platform way up here. I'm going to try and highlight it. There it is there. And if we can see, if I draw a reference brush, that's actually 1,472 units high. And you're saying, well, what gives, Tom? If that platform only goes to here, how am I going to get up here? Well, if we select the funk, uh, the funk plat and we look into its key valves, I messed around with this speed and I put in like a big one, like 1,000. You can play around with the speed, but 1,000 works pretty good. And then a height of 712, so it's actually going up 712 units, which again, how do you get up there, Tom? You're probably saying, what's going on here? But through this really fast speed, just the mechanic of that uh, funk plan, the fact that the player info player or the player start and the actual player in the game is a physics object, we can kind of create a human catapult here. Now let's jump into the map and I'll try to explore this a little bit more. I actually have the map already loaded because I was testing, but let's go map and I called it cat for catapult. Let's jump in here. Okay, and we can see it here. There's our depth textures. You can see it's a really tall map. If we look up, we've got that little platform over there. And the puzzle is going to be how to get up to that platform if this funk plat only goes about halfway. Well, I put in a little target tip here. So if we hit that, it says this platform is a catapult. Once it flings you into the air, use the move keys WSAD to move around. You should be able to get to the top floor way up there. Okay, so that's the goal. All right, so well, let me show you first how it works. Okay, so you step on it, it goes so fast that it flings you up, and if the player moves forward, you can actually get on that platform, even though that funk plat only went about halfway. Now, I got no way to get down other than dying, so let's just reload that map again. All right. It, this is goofy. I know it's gonna. It, it would be kind of hard to texture an area like this, and it needs some refinement, obviously. But this is how it works. So I'm gonna step on it, and I'm gonna look down. You can see when that funk plat stops its travel, it sort of flings us like a catapult. So there it goes, and you can see we get flung. And if I don't move, I'm gonna go straight down, and I'm gonna die, right? But if we load it up again and we set it up like a puzzle, 
you know, the player's going well, scratching his head, well, how do I get up there when this plat only goes up halfway? But then you get this little tip that tells you, hey, this is a catapult, and then you got to move. So I'm going to step on there. When it flings me up, I'm going to hit my forward key, and I just barely get up there. Okay, it needs some refinement. I know it's kind of goofy, and, you know, but the point of the matter is be creative. Use these uh, entities in a creative way that will astonish and delight the player. And if you can do things like that and be really original, you're going to be a great level designer. So I'm going to leave it here for today. So, well, should I, t oh, look at that texture. Oh, I should get my wrist slapped for that. That's not even nice, but okay. Let me get away with that one because it was so creative. Okay. Should I take the plunge here? That's a long way down. All right, let's take the plunge. I'll see you in the next one. That concludes this part 10 episode. I'd like to thank everyone that's joined the channel and for all the amazing emails and comments. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, now's as good a time as any, so mash that subscribe button. More videos to come, so I hope you can join me again. Until then, thanks for watching, stay well, and all the best.